This is an analysis of Ulti's holdings and reference stocks, particularly the companies and the tickers that are being traded against by Ulti. And what I found surprised me. This video is not financial advice, nor is it a recommendation. Please do your own due diligence before investing into anything. Aside from cash and treasury bills and treasury bonds, there are roughly 21 different tickers that are being traded against by Ulti. If you count the first ticker we're going to cover on this list, it's technically 22, but they don't trade against this first one. They simply hold it. This first one is FGXXX. That's the ticker for the open-ended fixed income mutual fund called the First American Funds, Inc. Government Obligations Fund. If we look at the holdings breakdown on Seeking Alpha, it shows that this fund basically just holds cash and governments. And governments basically just means treasury bonds or other government obligations, which is exactly what the description says. According to MarketWatch and Seeking Alpha, the expense ratio is 0.14%, so it is pretty cheap. From the charts I've managed to find, this fund seems to stay roughly at a dollar. To be honest, I'm not really sure why they picked this to hold because they already have direct cash holdings and they have direct treasury holdings as well. So this kind of seems redundant, but they do have this as a direct holding. Everything from here on on this list are the tickers that Ulti is trading against in their option strategy. So they currently only have synthetic exposure to them. All data is from April the 13th. And all comments as to a company's profitability are using just plain net income to help keep this as accessible to beginner investors as possible. First on this list is ticker symbol BHVN or Biohaven Pharmaceuticals. This is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company. The company is focused on the discovery, development, and commercialization of treatments in key therapeutic areas, including immunology, neuroscience, and oncology. Their work includes glutamate modulation, myostatin platforms, and they have some clinical trials in the works on product candidates for obsessive compulsive disorder and spinal muscular atrophy. The company currently pays no dividends and currently reports zero revenue generation and does not appear to have ever made any revenue or for that matter any profits. Their implied volatility, otherwise known as IV, is at 122.33%, which is an 89th percentile IV. And of course, again, that was pulled April 13th. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the daily candlestick chart for this stock. As you can see, it's been going up pretty consistently the last few months, bounced up even higher to an all-time high stalled out and then now it's hit what appears to be the beginnings of a support it could go either way but it looks like it may have hit a support for the moment next on the list is clsk that's the ticker symbol for clean spark we did reference this on the original ulti video it is a bitcoin mining company they own data centers in georgia that mine bitcoin and it does not host miners for other companies which means they probably own and retain all the miners and the coins in their facilities CleanSpark currently pays no dividends, and as of Q4 of last year, it was its first profitable quarter since Q4 of 2021. So this seems to benefit almost exclusively from the increase in price of Bitcoin. Its implied volatility is sitting at 127.48% as of April 13th as a 3 percentile IV, which means this is actually pretty tame compared to its normal volatility levels. As we can see here on the daily chart, this company has benefited greatly from Bitcoin going up in price, considering it's their main holding. It is, however, important to consider the fact that the Bitcoin halving is coming up, and that could have an effect on this stock. For those who maybe don't know too much about crypto, I'll put this in very simple terms. The Bitcoin halving is when miners receive half as much in Bitcoin for the same amount of mining operation that they do. While this does increase the cost of acquiring another full Bitcoin, it also should theoretically increase the price of existing Bitcoins that are already on the market. Number three on this list is Coinbase, ticker symbol COIN. They are one of the more well-known crypto exchanges. They are already a reference asset for another Yieldmax ETF. That Yieldmax ETF is CONY. That ETF has performed pretty well in recent months. They pay no dividends currently. And Q4 of 2023 was its first profitable quarter since Q4 of 2021. So as you can see, just like CleanSpark, Coinbase also tends to hinge on the price of Bitcoin. Its implied volatility as of April 13th is sitting at 97.9% and that is a 78th percentile IV. Next on the list is ticker symbol CVNA, that is Carvana. Carvana is a holding company that operates as an e-commerce platform. 
The cars are bought and sold by others on their platforms. They currently pay zero dividends, and in terms of net income, Q3 of 2023 appears to be their only profitable quarter that I can find, and I can only look back as far as Q3 of 2021 on my brokerage app. Now I'm aware on the daily chart because of how far I zoomed out, it looks like it's not that big of a change between the lows and the highs currently, but it's actually a much bigger change than it looks like. If I zoom in here on the chart, you can see it goes down as low as $3.56. I'm surprised they didn't do like a reverse split or something. And that's right before 2023. Now it's sitting somewhere around the ballpark of $75 as of the day of this chart. I got this chart on April 13th, so there should have been at least two more trading days, maybe more between when I'm recording this and when you're actually seeing it. In light of that, it's really no surprise to see that Carvana is sitting at an IV of 106.76%, which is only a 42 percentile IV. Next on our list is ticker symbol EH, which is Ehang Holdings Limited. Ehang Holdings Limited is an autonomous aerial vehicle technology platform company. The company designs, develops, manufactures, sells, and operates AAVs, and they're supporting systems and infrastructure for a broad range of industries and applications, including passenger transportation, logistics, smart city management, and aerial media solutions. The company currently pays no dividends, and it is not and has not been profitable in net income on all the reports I looked at going back as far as Q3 of 2021. Their IV is currently sitting at 78.98%, which is a 13th percentile IV. Next up is Enphase Energy, ticker symbol ENPH. Enphase is a solar company. They provide solar systems for homes, and they provide entire systems, including the microinverters, power storage, EV chargers, and solar panels. The company currently pays zero dividends, but is currently profitable. The latest report from Q4 of 2023 shows a profit of $20.92 million. Their IV currently sits at 82.75%, which is a 99th percentile IV. Next on the list is GigaCloud Technology, Inc., ticker symbol GCT. GigaCloud is a B2B online marketplace. The company currently pays no dividends, but it is profitable. Q4 2023 showed a net income of $35.57 million. Their IV currently sits at 110.42%, which is a 52nd percentile IV. Next up is ITCI, which is Intracellular Therapies, Inc. They're a biopharmaceutical company focused on the development and commercialization of therapeutics for central nervous system disorders. Products include oral antipsychotics. The company currently pays no dividends. They're not profitable, but they have at least generated some revenue. IV currently sits at 98.78%, which is a 98th percentile IV. Next up is LABU. That is a ticker symbol for the Direxion Daily S&P Biotech Bull 3X ETF. But then in layman's terms, that is a 3X leveraged ETF that attempts to track the S&P Biotech Select Industry Index. The fund, under normal circumstances, invests at least 80% of its net assets in financial instruments such as swap agreements, securities of the index, and ETFs that track the index that, in combination, provide 3x daily leverage exposure to the index, consistent with the fund's investment objective. The index is designed to measure the performance of the biotech sub-industry based on the global industry classification standards. The fund is non-diversified. This ETF does pay dividends, however, they've only paid four dividends in the past year, and I don't see any other dividends beyond that. They did recently do a 1 for 20 reverse split in December of 2023. The IV is currently sitting at 92.13%, which is a 48th percentile IV. Next, we have Marathon Digital Holdings, Inc., ticker symbol MARA. Marathon owns and operates Bitcoin mining facilities or data centers. They sell proprietary software or technology to third parties operating in the Bitcoin ecosystem. So they're not just a Bitcoin mining firm, they also sell software as well. They claim to generate electricity from renewable energy resources, including methane gas capture, to power their mining operations. According to their website, Marathon claims to have a 17,381 Bitcoin treasury as of March 31st, 2024. They pay no dividends. They are profitable. In Q4 2023, they showed a net income of $223.4 million. Their IV currently sits at 113.42%, which is a 35th percentile IV. Diving back into the pharma sector, we have Mind Medicine, ticker symbol MNMD. They're a pharma company that develops products to treat brain disorders. Product candidates include possible treatments for anxiety and autism. They currently pay no dividends, and they did a 1 for 15 reverse split on August 29, 2022. 
currently ready to report zero revenue generation, and they have net losses of $23.86 million in Q4 of 2023. Their IV right now is 114.22%, and that is a 60th percentile IV. Next up is MicroStrategy Inc., ticker symbol MSTR. They are a Bitcoin development company. They design, develop, market, and sell their own software platform. They're already a yield max ETF reference stock under the ticker MSTY, otherwise known as MISTI. They are profitable as of Q4 of last year. Their IV is sitting at 134.22%, which is a 91st percentile IV. Next up, we have NanoX Imaging Limited, ticker symbol NNOX. They're an imaging company that develops technology to make imaging more efficient and cost effective. They currently pay no dividends, and they are bleeding money as far back as I can find on reports. Their IV is currently at 101.77%, and that is a 53rd percentile IV. Finally, getting out of pharma and Bitcoin, we have Root Inc., ticker symbol ROOT. Root is a holding company whose subsidiaries are in the insurance industry. They are currently losing money, and they have been for multiple quarters. Their IV is sitting at 153.04%, which is a 69th percentile IV. And next up, we have Sunrun Inc., ticker symbol RUN. They're a home solar, battery storage, energy services company that designs, develops, installs, sells, and owns and maintains residential solar energy systems in the U.S. They currently pay no dividends. They are currently losing money. Their IV is sitting at 111.33%, which is a 95th percentile IV. And if you look at the daily chart here for their price action, they have been steadily trending down for quite a while now. Next up is Solar Edge Technologies, Inc., ticker symbol SEDG. They are a solar energy hardware company. They currently pay no dividends. They are losing money on net income. Their IV is at 88.92%, which is an 88th percentile IV. And on the daily candlestick chart here, we can see they've actually had a pretty steep drop in recent months. And it seems to maybe be flattening out, but it's really anybody's guess what's going to happen next. Moving on, we have Super Microcomputer Inc., ticker symbol SMCI. They sell servers as well as the parts for servers in addition to telecom hardware. They currently pay no dividends. They are profitable on the latest quarterly reports. Their IV is at 94.43%, which is a 90th percentile IV. And if you look at their daily candlestick charts here, they've had a dramatic spike in price in the last few months. Next, we have Viking Therapeutics, Inc., ticker symbol VKTX. They're a clinical stage pharma company focused on the development of therapies for treatment of endocrine and metabolic disorders. They currently pay no dividends. They are currently losing money. Their IV is sitting at 91.66%, which is a 37th percentile IV. Looking at the daily candlestick chart, we can see they recently had a dramatic gain, followed by some degree of volatility. Moving on, we have Vertiv Holdings Company, ticker symbol VRT. Vertiv sells power systems, thermal management systems, racks, and enclosures for servers, in addition to whole server setups, including something they call the smart closet. They do pay dividends. They used to be as frequently as once per year. On the last December payout, they changed it to quarterly, and they've been paying quarterly ever since. They've paid two quarterly payouts in that time. They've paid 2.5 cents on December 2023 and March of this year. They are profitable, and net income appears to be growing the past few quarters, as have their stock prices. If you look at their daily chart, you can see they've had a pretty steady incline in price. Their IV is at 73.27% as a 92nd percentile IV. Next up is Wayfair, ticker symbol W. You may have heard of them. They are an online e-commerce site for furniture and housewares. They currently pay zero dividends. They are currently losing money. They have an IV of 81.93% at a 61st percentile IV. If we look at their daily chart, we can see that they used to be at a much higher stock price. They dropped and then they've been trading sideways ever since. And finally, the last holding on our list is Wolf Speed Inc., ticker symbol WLLF. They're a semiconductor company focused on silicon carbide technologies with applications such as fast charging for EVs and power storage. The company currently pays no dividends. The company is currently losing money, but they have previously reported at least one quarter of positive net income. Their IV sits at 110.61%, and that is a 100th percentile IV. And as we can see here on the price action chart, we can see that they've actually been trending downward for quite a while now after having a double top. Now that that's out of the way, here's my final thoughts. First off, Yieldmax classified this as high risk for a reason. Many of these companies are losing money. Some have never even actually turned a profit. 
Despite the number of tickers they trade against, this ETF is heavily biased toward crypto, solar, and pharma stocks, so diversification isn't as great as it might look on the outside. This next part wasn't in the script. I actually came back after we just saw this month's Ulti payout. This is now the second dividend payout in a row from Ulti, and it was over a dollar, despite the fact that they've been trending downward in share price. Usually that's not what happens on these ETFs when they go down in value. So I'm not sure how much they can continue to do this because if they're going to pay over a dollar in dividends, they either have to do a reverse split, which is always bad, or they're going to have to lower the dividend. I'm not sure which one they're going to go with, but something's got to give. In light of this information, what are your feelings on Ulti now? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, you might also enjoy this one here on the screen. Subscribe to join the Cash Flow Club and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video.